In this video, we have a blasphemous pastor who says some very harsh things about the father in the prodigal son parable, which directly relate to God the Father. This woke preacher does not like what the father in this parable does. And let's listen to this absolute nonsense of a clip from his sermon on Luke 15, 11 to 32. The parable of the prodigal son has always had this ending that appeared to be like a, a, a happy ending with his father and his sons. But I have always felt this parable concluded with a lot with a lot of leftovers and unfinished business that needed to be done. Why was the father not more reluctant in this decision with his son? Why did he give in so easy and not hesitate about what he felt or thought in this situation? Maybe the father did not want to discourage his son. Maybe he did not want to be thought of as a dream killer for his son's dream or to take this opportunity away from his son. The son returns to his father. He does repent when he is done. I think there is more than just the son that needs to repent here. I think the father needs to repent as well. I think the father needs to apologize to his son for letting him go, for not fighting for him, for not being reluctant in that moment and pausing to think and sound and ask him, why do you want to go? The father has had the opportunity to, 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 to not blame just the son, but he can also take it on and say, I hold some responsibility in this as well. And then there's the other son, remember? The one that was loyal, the one that stayed at home, the one that didn't go away. The oldest son confronts his father and reminds him that I have always been there for you. It has been me. It wasn't him. It was me that there was there for you. In fact, he even says, I worked like a slave for you. And yet, what did you give me all these years? No party, no fatty calf, no celebration. What did you give me? The father responds in my eyes and gives him a speech about him always being there. Whatever belongs to him is his and blah, 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 blah. But one thing the father does not say to his son is, I am sorry. I am grateful for you. I am thankful for what you have done for all these years. Son, I love you. Forgive me. Yes, 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 yes. We should have a special celebration for you. Son, I love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The son here is not asking for a party. He is not asking for celebration. He is simply asking for his father to say that I love you. I appreciate you. Son, thank you so much for what you have done. I recognize all that you have done, and I want you to know that I love you for that. It is hard for fathers to say those words sometimes. It's absolutely shocking what this pastor has said. Unfortunately, he has taken the parable out of contents and consequently has engaged in saying some blasphemous things about the Lord Almighty. The context of the three parables in Luke 15, so that's the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and of course the prodigal son or the lost son, fits into the context of verses 1 and 2 of Luke 15, where the tax collectors and sinners are drawing near to hear Jesus but the Pharisees and the scribes grumble about Jesus saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. And then Jesus speaks these three parables, the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son to combat the bad attitudes of the Pharisees, their ungodly and unbiblical attitudes towards sinful people. The three main characters in the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son symbolize three things. First, the father symbolizes God. He's gracious. He's merciful. The prodigal son symbolizes the sinners, those who are rebellious against God. And the oldest son symbolizes the Pharisees who criticize Jesus for showing love to sinners. You cannot understand this parable unless you make these connections. And I know several people that do not like this parable because they related this parable to something that happened in their family. But this relates to God, sinners, and the Pharisees. 
This is why it's absolutely shocking to hear a preacher say that the Father needs to repent and say sorry. This preacher is saying that God needs to repent and say sorry. He's saying God got it wrong. And so sorry preacher, God did not get it wrong. The preacher is upset with the same things that the Pharisees are upset about. And the grace of God that is shown to these sinners is the grace that is shown to every sinner who turns from their sin and trusts in Christ. I'm constantly shocked that ordained people, people who went to seminary, maybe they went to terrible seminaries, I don't know, but I'm constantly shocked that people can't pick up a commentary and read a book to get a proper understanding of a parable, get a proper understanding of God's word. In contrast to what this guy says about God, in essence, needing to repent, this story teaches us that we're the ones who need to repent. We're the ones that have acted like this prodigal son. We've gone against God. We've, we're sinners against God. We've lived without God and acted like the prodigal. But we're the ones that need to repent and come to our senses, like Luke 15 verse 17 says. We're like both sons who need to repent. We both need to say, I'm sorry, Lord. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven and against you. And we also are the ones that need to confess our pride, our arrogance, thinking that maybe we're better than others. Look at the grace of the Father, though, his compassion. In Luke 15, 20, he sees his son coming in the distance, and the Father is filled with compassion. And he puts shoes on his son, which means he's not going to be a servant. He's reconciled. There's a great celebration. And this is like what God shows to us. God shows us compassion. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're outside of him. You yourself need to come to your senses and recognize that you've been prodigal with God. You've rebelled against God. And you need to run to the Father and to Jesus Christ. And they're gracious and merciful. And you'll be reconciled to God. And you need to trust in the work of Christ accomplished on the cross for you. Thanks for watching and God bless.